Braden Leonard is a big outdoorsman and dedicated member of his community. However, life as he knew it changed dramatically after an accident, one that eventually led him to help reinvent the future of tech. Watch this story. Braden Leonard answered the call to become a firefighter after the tragic events of 9-11. One of my good friends has introduced me to a volunteer fire department. So I started volunteering in 2001, 2002. Is as an opportunity to take some trainings and expand my skills and knowledge. Leonard loved volunteering so much, he turned it into his career. It was a good feeling, you know, that we could have a pretty serious impact on someone's life on a day-to-day -day basis. As an avid outdoorsman, Leonard spent much of his free time snowboarding and mountain biking. It was on one of those biking trips in 2014 that his life would change forever. I was on a short downhill section, um, and the front tire of my mountain bike got pinched between two rocks and it actually launched me over the handlebars Superman style. I reached out and uh, my palm struck a tree. One of the thorns, thorns got deeply embedded in my palm. Although the fall was painful, Leonard finished the ride, thinking little of the wound on his hand. I've had worse happen on rides. I, I think I rode another three or four miles after, after the fall. But the next day, his hand was extremely swollen and painful, so he went to the ER. Within hours of going to the first emergency room, they transferred me to a local trauma center. And from there, Leonard's condition only got worse. My lungs were filling with fluid, and um, I wasn't doing well, so they, they had to put me in a medically induced coma. I do remember before I went out, there was a possibility that they might have to amputate my hand if they couldn't stop the infection. It seemed like a long shot. They just wanted to prepare me for it. And then when I awoke, my hand was gone. Braden Leonard is here with us now. Braden, welcome to you. Hi. So, what? Uh, thank, you. Right, thank you. So, what? What was it? How did? How did a thorn in your palm turn into the amputation of your hand? Uh, so the thorn was really the insertion mechanism uh, to get the bacteria into the tissue. So you have this fatty tissue in your palm, the okay. fascia tissue. Mm -hmm. um, the technical term for what happened is necrotizing fasciitis. So it's. So it was, the, it was a flesh-eating bacteria? Yeah, uh, strep. So, I mean, you've heard of strep throat. Yeah. It's the same exact bacteria, actually. And it was in the tree that you hit? Uh, it's unlikely that it was in the tree. It was probably already in my body or on my glove, and the thorn allowed it to get into uh, yeah. this environment where it could really thrive and, and grow. I mean, it, se it seems like a freak accident like you know the, what are the <laughs> odds about, of that happening uh, i think it was one in eight hundred thousand. Oh my god or something oh. so you're i mean you're a firefighter for a living and you you go under thinking probably they're not going to have to amputate and when you wake up and find out they did what was your feeling uh, it was a bit of a surprise uh they did give me some forewarning they said that that you know that potential existed that they might have to amputate my hand i was you know a little out of it i was on a lot of medication so I didn't really think much of it. I was, you know, it's like, oh, this is an infection. They're going to take care of it. And I woke up uh, nearly a week later. I came out of a medically induced coma, and my hand was gone. Is it true at one point they gave you only a 30% chance of survival? Yeah. So, I mean, putting, putting things in perspective, if you have a 30% chance of survival and you survive, minus a hand, you know. You're doing okay. You're, yeah. Um, I, I heard, I read that someone who was missing his leg came up to you after seeing that you lost your hand and said he, he didn't envy you. Yeah. Can you, what happened? Uh, it didn't make sense to me at the time. Uh, I, I thought he was crazy. I was, I was like, why? Well, I, I couldn't, I'm a big snowboarder, um, winter sports hiker. So it's like, wow, I can, you know, I can still go snowboarding right now. I have, I have both of my legs. I can, I can still run. I can still do a lot of things. Um, what I didn't realize is how difficult it is to replace a hand, you know, as opposed to um, a leg. You could, you could put a, a simple peg leg on and just improve your quality of life instantly. You're able to walk around, um, you know, do most of the things you need to do. Uh, whereas with a hand, it's really hard to replace all of the capabilities yeah. that the hand has. He knew something you didn't about prosthetics. He did. And yes. so you, you'd start trying prosthetics, but none of them was equal to the tasks of your life. I mean, you were this like avid outdoorsman doing all this stuff. And, and not to mention your career as a firefighter. So unlike, 
unlike most of us, uh, he actually decided to do something about that. I mean, I think most of us would say, like, that's unfortunate. This is my new reality. I'm alive. Um, not Braden. Coming up after the break, how he found something that would help him adapt to his new lifestyle and may help many, many others. Stay tuned. So before the break, we met former firefighter Braden Leonard, who lost his hand after a terrible infection following a mountain biking accident. But he did not succumb to depression over his misfortune. Instead, he found a way to continue his active way of life. Watch this. I didn't realize that the shortcomings in upper limb prostheses until I actually started the process for getting fitted and seeing what was available. I discovered that uh, they're generally uncomfortable. It's sort of clumsy and clunky, and the attachments, like the robotic hands that I'm sure everyone's seen, they're not that great for all around use. I wasn't able to get my hands on anything to be able to ride a mountain bike. Leonard realized he needed to design his own prosthetic. He applied to the Autodesk Build Space in Boston, a technology center for engineers and entrepreneurs, where he could use their advanced machinery free of charge to invent new prosthetics. Like this arm, he built to be able to ride his motorcycle. I've recently been riding my motorcycle a lot. I've been commuting to work on it, and it's a great feeling to be able to do that again. If something happens to anyone, it shouldn't be the end of their life. Pretty cool. We're back now with Braden Leonard. You know, they say necessity is the mother of all invention. So, but did, did you have any background in engineering? I studied civil engineering in college. Okay. Uh, and I, I never finished my degree before I uh, started uh, the fire academy. But you figured I'm going to go back and I'm going to find a way. And, I mean, how, well, describe the difference having that versus having sort of the regular prosthetics that they give, give you. Um... I've been working on a way to sort of capture um, this twisting of the wrists uh, called pronation and supination, which a lot of times uh, tends to get lost inside of a prosthetic socket. So I don't know if you imagine putting your arm in a tube, you'll, you'll make a rotation and, you know, it won't, it'll be a few degrees before the actual outer shell moves with you. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a sloppy steering wheel effect, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. It's yeah. kind of hard to describe. Uh, so we capture more of that movement. Um, and another issue that I found with a lot of uh, the mechanical components that are available is that I was breaking them. I broke... Uh, you were too strong. Well... He's a firefighter. Uh, I fall too hard, maybe. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, so you needed something more sturdy. Something yeah, like something... Uh, I've been kind of taking a page out of, like, uh, climbing hardware and sailing hardware. Um, these really strong mechanical parts, they're rated. That You have a load rating, you know. But it's, a, it's amazing that no one has done this before you. I mean, you're not, clearly not the only one who needed this. And I know now you're, you're trying to help others mm -hmm. who want this as well. Do you think there'll be a time when you can fight fires again? I, I mean, a lot of guys would have abandoned that dream by now. I mean, it's kind of hard to completely let it go. I have, uh, I mean, my brothers at the Johnson Fire Department have been such, like, a source of support for me throughout all this. They've been there. Anything I've needed, you know, just... And, yeah, it's definitely something, something that I miss. And if, uh, if this all works out and there's an opportunity... I mean, I'd have to go through testing. It's just to be realistic. I don't yeah. want to endanger someone else, mm -hmm. you know, to, uh, for my ego so I can... You know, yeah, but I think be. it's a testament to your resilience that you're that you're even hoping to do it. I mean, that you really that you have it as your goal. Um, I know you say the good news is you you are actually are and always have been left-handed. Yeah, uh, so, you know, got so, that going for me. So that's one good thing. Um, but listen, good luck to you in your in your future endeavors and all these pursuits because I, I admire how active you are despite what happened. Great, thank you so much, Megan. All the best. And don't go away. We'll be right back. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.